Welcome back to Latilidi. In this video, I will talk about selection tools in Adobe Illustrator. It doesn't sound important, but don't try to underestimate it, but its function can be very helpful if we really understand it and we know how to use it properly. I will explain in detail and reveal secret techniques in using these tools that will not be found anywhere else. So don't skip this video and watch it completely until it's finished. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell, so you can get notifications when Latilidi uploads new videos, because there will always be something new that you will find on this channel. There are lots of selection techniques in Adobe Illustrator. On the toolbar itself, there are 8 tools that are used specifically for selecting only. And another interesting fact is that there are still many techniques or selection methods in Adobe Illustrator besides those on the toolbar. Without further ado, let's jump into Adobe Illustrator. Here, I've created a new toolbar, which only contains selection tools, to separate them from other tools, so we can focus on that. It's easy to create a new toolbar like this. All you have to do is click the settings button here. Then look for the menu button in the upper right corner. Then select, New Toolbar. After that, all you have to do is fill in the toolbar name in the, New Toolbar panel. And click OK. You can close it again, if you no longer need it. And to open it, all you have to do is bring it up in the window menu, Toolbar, and find the name of the toolbar that you have created. On this new toolbar, I only filled it with 5 selection tools. Because actually, in the toolbar there are still more tools whose function is for selection. These tools are the Artboard Tool, Perspective Selection Tool, and Live Paint Selection Tool. But I'll talk about it in another video. In this video I only talk about the selection tool that is most commonly used for object or path. And before we go on, it should be noted that all selection tools have a main function that is not just selecting objects. There are further actions from the selection results. Further action that I mean, is to edit the object or path, that has been selected. That's the main point. Because before we can edit an object or path, we must highlight it or separate it from other objects around it. After the object or part of the object is selected, then we can edit it. Maybe that is the main purpose of selecting object. The first tool I'm going to talk about is the, selection tool. It is the main tool, or basic tool, or master tool, or whatever you call it, whose main function is to select content, or objects, or groups. Apart from being able to select objects, we can also use the selection tool to edit objects, such as moving objects, or groups. If the selection tool is active, and you are selecting a content or object, then you will see a box covering the object, that is called, bounding box. But if you don't see it, then you can bring it back in the view menu and look for Show Bounding Box. This bounding box is used to move, rotate, duplicate, scale, and flip objects by dragging the object or a handle. While for the handle itself is one of the hollow squares along the bounding box. But if you just want to select the object and don't plan to edit it, or you just want to move it accidentally, then you can hide it for a while. And another interesting fact, is that we can move objects using this selection tool without dragging the object. This is not magic but it is possible. The trick is, by double clicking the selection tool on the toolbar. But first you have to select an object, so the move panel will appear. This panel allows us to change the position and angle of the object. You can check the preview to see the result. You can just click the OK button, or you can also press the copy button so that the position of the original object is not affected, and only the duplicated object will move. In general, we visually transform objects by dragging them. But in this way we can transform objects using numbers. When using this tool, the objects will be highlighted, if you point your cursor over a piece of content, or an object. By highlighting an object with this tool, you can get some information about that object. First, you will immediately know the full shape of the object, especially if the object is covered by other objects on it. You can see the shape of the content, because this tool highlights objects based on the line path that the object has. So that you can find out whether the object is the open path or not.
Secondly, you can find out the X and Y location of the object. If you point your cursor right at the center of the object, as well as if you point it to one of the anchor points. Next, you just have to click to select it. Here, you will find additional information on the object you have selected. Namely information about the path, and information on the number, and position of the anchor points of the object. Then you can edit it using the bounding box. This bounding box allows you to easily control these objects. In other words, the bounding box is a tool that the selection tool has, to make it easier for us to visually control, or edit content. Most beginners in Adobe Illustrator use this tool only for moving, rotating, flipping, and nothing more. But it will be very easy to work in Adobe Illustrator if we maximize its function. Like using this selection tool to duplicate, you only need to press the Alt key on the window, or the Option key on a Mac. Until your cursor icon changes to 2, then you just have to drag it. In addition, you can select hidden objects. Objects that are covered with objects that are on it. For example I made a circle, so that we can easily recognize it, so I gave it a red color. Then, on top of it I made a rectangle bigger than the circle so that it covered all parts of the circle, and gave it a blue color. Normally you cannot select, and edit the circle because it is covered by the rectangle. It can happen if you move the rectangle. Or you can activate outline mode in the view menu, so you can see the circle and then edit it. But do you know that without doing all of that, and by only using the selection tool, you can easily select the object behind the object. You just need to hold the control key on the keyboard. Click once until there is a sign, less than, on the cursor, then you just have to click one more time, to select the circle. Now you can edit the circle without moving the rectangle above it. This method can also be used to select objects, on several layers. The second tool is the, Direct Selection tool. This tool allows you to select anchor points, or paths. The difference with the selection tool, is that the selection tool is used to select content as objects, while the, Direct Selection tool, is used to select content as a path, or anchor point. This tool has a function to control anchor points and paths. Where anchor points and paths, are part of a shape that forms an object. With this tool we can edit, move one or more anchor points or paths. If you select one or more anchor points, then you only move the anchor points or paths, that you only select. But if you select all anchor points that the object has, it means you are moving an object. This tool also has the function to change, and control the curvature of the path. Just like the selection tool, you can open the move panel to move anchor points or paths using numbers. Then you can try it for yourself, and do some experiments. So in brief, the function of this tool is not only for selection, but also has a function to control and edit anchor points or paths. The thing to pay attention to when using this tool, is that if you select one or more corner anchor points, a control widget will appear, which will then allow you to change the shape of the corner. You can just drag it towards the inside corner, and automatically change it to a round corner. But there are still corner type options, if we double click the corner of this widget, this will open a corner panel. There are three types of corners that we can choose from. The first is round, inverted round, and the third is a chamfer. Then there is a radius to control how much radius we want. And the last one is rounding. For absolute rounding, it will make the corners perfectly round. But if you use relative rounding, the resulting round will be adjusted according to the angle. So, for a sharper angle it will produce a sharp round too. Furthermore, you can do some experiments using only this corner widget. If the anchor point is a corner, the controller is a corner widget, which is a small circle with a point in the middle. But if the anchor point forms a curve, the controller is the handle, a thin line with a point at the end. If you move this handle, the curves that the path has, will adjust accordingly. In Adobe Illustrator, you will often use this tool to make edits to your objects, control the anchor points and curves. And if you are new to Adobe Illustrator it would be better if you often practice with this tool, especially practice using the handles. Next, Group Selection Tool. 
This is a special selection tool, I mean that all selection tools are special, because they have their own special functions. You will agree with me if you have worked with many shapes or objects, or work with groups. This tool allows you to select an object, or shape in a group, even choosing a group that is in a group. Uniquely, you can select objects that are in the group, without having to enter the group, or even without having to ungroup them. Here I have made a specific example of what I said earlier. Here I have created a group, a large group, which includes other groups, up to five levels. I make groups of objects that have the same shape to groups that have the same color. You can select in group, even the innermost group that is in the large group. Even select several objects that are in different groups. Or select one group or more group in large group. But you need to know that this tool only allows you to select and move. You cannot edit objects with this tool. But it is very necessary if working with many objects or many groups. All you need is practice and do some experiment to find out what this tool is capable of. The next one is the magic wand tool. The function of this tool is to allow you to select objects based on the same color, stroke weight, stroke color, opacity, or the same blending mode by clicking on an object as an example. You only need to select one object, and this tool will automatically select another object that is similar to the object you selected. You just need to double-click this tool on the toolbar to determine which equation you want to select. In this panel, you are also allowed to determine the tolerance. The smaller the tolerance number that you input, the closer to, or exactly the same will be. Conversely, the greater the number you input, the equation will be further away. For the record, if you use RGB color mode, the maximum number is 255. And if you use CMYK, the maximum number is only up to 100. The specificity of this tool panel, it can be accessed in the window menu, which means you can lock it as a collapsed panel. But if you want to use it, you still have to choose the magic wand tool first. The last one is the lasso tool. With this tool, you can select anchor points and paths independently of a single object, or in a group, with a lasso pattern. You only need to drag around the anchor point or path that you want to select. There is not much explanation about this tool. This is only a tool to select anchor points or paths with a lasso. And to know more for sure you can try it. After knowing these facts, we can distinguish the specific functions of all these tools, so that we can maximize its use when working in Adobe Illustrator. In general, I divided these five tools into two categories. The first is a single function tool, which is only used for selecting. And the second is a tool that has multiple functions, which not only has a function to select, but also a tool used to edit objects, anchor points, or path. For the selection tool, direct selection tool, and group selection tool, are included in the category of tools that have multiple functions. This tool allows us to perform further actions, namely to edit the content that we select. As for lasso tool, and magic wand tool have no follow-up to make edits, or we are not possible to edit from the results of the selection of these two tools. Even to simply move objects or content, we are only possible to select, and for follow-up we are required to use other tools to edit it. Many people out there do not take full advantage of these five tools, they often do work related to the capabilities of these tools but never use them. That's a waste of time and energy in my opinion. And that's why this tool is made to make it easier. What do you think about these five tools? I want to know what you think in the comments. And see you in the next video.